All right, it is time for the patch, the release day, update 1.3.0 for Warhammer 3. And this is a huge set of patch notes, so buckle in. We're going to look through it. Before we jump through anything, let's just kind of take a look at the quick recap of what this is going to include. And this can help you determine if you want to stick around for the nitty gritty, full on details of these patch notes. So here's the kind of spark notes that... Um, I guess the TLDR that uh, Creative Assembly has provided. So for 1.3, we get the Regiments of Renown introducing seven, wait, no, whole new set of elite troops to all seven factions, this time focus on mounted units, which should be fun. Land battles have joined the ranked matchmaking queue. Miao Ying can now properly use her Eye of Storm ability in combat. That's the one, remember, that increases melee attack as well as weapon strength and armor piercing weapon damage. Additional character trait reworks and skill tree updates for the Legendary Lords. Several adjustments to make the Realm of Chaos less punishing or tedious. Much needed adjustments to how the AI Zinch faction utilizes the changing of the ways. Improvements to the Cathayan formation attack ability. Fixes to the Kurgan warband spawn rates. Numerous improvements to unit responsiveness. AI improvements to their battle strategy as well as various fixes for player reported issues and feedback and notes. And more. So we'll be uh, pushing through the entirety of these patch notes here. Again, there are quite a lot of them, so we're going to try to make a uh, quick, short work of them. We have the lovely High Elf music playing in the background, because why would you want to listen to any other music when it comes to Warhammer? Um, let me know in the comment section below. Here's my hot take. Warhammer 2 soundtrack, better than Warhammer 3. I think Warhammer 3 has got some cool some cool parts to it, like when you get to the Kiss Lab or you get to the Ogre Kingdoms, um, or even Cathay's like very specific music, but I think by and large, Warhammer 2's music is better. That's just a random rant. I want to hear your opinion, though, in the comments. Warhammer 2 or Warhammer 3 OST, let it be known. But if that's all you wanted to know, you just want to jump into the patch and kind of figure things out for yourself, go ahead and do so. Before you head out, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Like I always say, those things mean so much to any content creator, and it is a great free way to give back to their channel or any other channel that you like to watch. But let's get started here on the entirety of the patch notes for version 1.3.0 for Total War Warhammer 3. Okay, so just jumping right on down into the release spotlight. Before this is a bunch of information on how to download it if you're on the Epic Store, or on the Steam Store, all that kind of action. So we can see all of our regiments of renown for each one of the factions here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a new one for each. Um, so it looks like we're going to get some uh, uh, bear riders, some skull crushers of corn. We have got the uh, the big uglies on uh, big uglies. <laughs> I'm so funny. Uh, Doom Knights. Then we have got the Slanesh. Um, what's it called? The Riders of Slanesh. The ones I can't think of the name of. And this looks like to be the Great Longma Riders. As well as some of the, um, the Pox Riders for Nogle. The ones on the Frogs. So very, very cool to see what these look like. But seven units are available to unlock. So we get the Great Longma Riders here. So reduced damage taken by Lord's Heroes that are close to the unit. Because they have Guardian. Um, immune to Psych. And then they also get an Armor Piercing uh, Attack. Which is kind of cool. They look pretty sick. Looks like they might actually have like... Some like effects around their helmet. Unless it's just like some light refracting off it. Maybe they have like lightning coming out of their eyes. I don't know what it is. But it looks cool. Their, their wings in general look pretty awesome too. The Righteous Lances of Weijin. Um, these formidable lances are the guardians of Grand Cathay's Sky Fleet. These elite bodyguards protect and serve as the bodyguards of the Lords of the Skies, cutting through the thickest armors with their mastercrafted weapons. Now, these could be really sick because you can use, they're going to be flying a lot, uh, around with your uh, Miao Ying and Zhao Ming. So, will be able to confer that reduced damage onto them. Even if you try to use any of the generic lords, it's going to help with that generic da that damage from Guardians. So, that's actually really, really, really nice. I like that. And also, it's a flying Guardian ability, right? So, it'll be able to give that ability uh, to your lords and heroes. And it's a great way to kind of be maneuverable with that. So, I like that quite a bit. Heralds of Corn's Fury, Blood Crushers of Corn, riding into battle with the heart or the heat of Corn's Fury. The Heralds make kindling of all that would challenge them on the battlefield. They wield some of the most ravenous, I said venomous, of Corn's cursed blades, and they take little to enrage the spirits possessing them with a fiery wrath. Ability Mantle of Immolation confers weakness to fire on all enemy units within the area of effect. And that's going to be pretty spicy here for uh, the Blood Crushers here. I do wonder um, if there's some other abilities into their actual, like, damage profile that we're not seeing right here. But, I mean, this is damage modifier, armor piercing, so I, I imagine they would just kind of put it in this. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how much flaming damage comes out of corn. I mean, we, we obviously... Uh, I'm, I'm an aside from the units. I, I think that... Um, 
I mean, obviously we don't get any spells, but almost all of the units do flaming magic damage, I believe, uh, with armor piercing too. Maybe it's just... I think... Shit, I just can't remember. I think the... Um, the blood letters just do armor, or uh, just do anti-infantry, not armor piercing, but they do flaming attacks. So it confers a weakness to fire on all enemy units within the area. In fact, should be pretty cool to see because the majority of uh, units do flaming attacks uh, that are demons from corn. Oath Brothers of Tor, War Bear Riders, lightning ripples across the weapons and armors of the Oath, Bo uh, Oath Brothers, gifts from their patron god Tor, the gifts of God of Thunder, allowing them to deliver cutting magic attacks to their foes. So Ability Call of Tor bombards all enemies surrounding the unit with lightning strikes, applying the blinded contact effect to affected enemies. Limited use. So that's pretty interesting. Probably have two or three binded uses as our uh, active ability uses of the Call of Tor. And it's going to have damage modifier magic attacks. It'd be kind of cool to actually see these guys have that have Call of Tor be a passive ability. Like we have with the Thunder Lizard for... Um, I, I, it's not called the Thunder Lizard, but the uh, uh, the Thunder Dude for the Lizardman, right? That every so often, every like 15, 45 seconds, whatever it is, it, it drops bolts of lightning down and it's on a recycle. Um, I really love that ability. And it'd be kind of cool to have that for the Oath Brothers. It makes them a little bit more less micro intensive because that's kind of actively going off passively for you and i like that a lot more but this is cool nonetheless that you get this um because it says bombards all enemies surrounding the unit so i imagine that you just press the ability and it's going to go off versus actually being a targetable moving bombard spell a la say rain of steel barons of the bog rain of steel is that it uh, man, clearly my brain's all over the place today. <laughs> you guys know, I mean, the, the lore of metal ability where you rain down shards. A steel rain! Wait, no, that's Dawn of War. Barons of the Bog, Pox Riders of Nurgle here. So to bear, to be near the barons is to suffer from the wasting sickness, a sick, a weakening aura that weakens the sword arms of nearby opponents. At the, at the same time, their vile steeds revitalize nearby demons of Nurgle with their foated gases. Ooh. -hoo. So Miasma of Rot restores vigor to nearby allied units. That's pretty spicy. And then the wasting sickness reduces the potency of enemy weapons and masses, massive units caught within the area of effect. This is only active when the unit is engaged in melee. That's pretty nice. So you're going to help with vigor as well as reducing enemy weapon damage. So that's kind of kind of, that's that's nice here. Also, they get increased armor than your standard edition Pox Riders of Nurgle. So quite like that. Sky Striders for the Crushers with great weapons in the Ogre Kingdoms. These unstoppable riders call the peaks of the long lost Titans their home, where they explore the mountaintops and fashion the forgotten steel of the Sky Titans into crude armor and weapons, adding to their potency in battle. Contact effect, frostbite, okay. Stat adjustment, they get increased weapon damage and missile resistance. So nothing crazy here, but I like that uh, frostbite's going to help them charge anything down that's a little bit faster than that tries to flee away. They're going to be able to uh, trample it down pretty quickly and at least keep things in there clutches for a lot longer internal eternal entourage oh so that's the heart seekers of slanesh um so this is not just your simple riders so these are the heart seekers the presence of the eternal entourage empowers nearby champions to new heights their worship filling their chosen idol with strength and prowess um so obsessive adoration empowers the melee attack and weapon strength of all friendly lord and he oh, oh that's pretty cool so if you use this with any of the other characters that can be mounted on a on a, uh, a seeker, or you just have it around Nakari, you're going to be giving a melee attack and weapon shrink bonus. That's very nice. Also, they have perfect vigor, so they'll be able to keep up with pretty much anyone as well. So very nice to see that on a regiment of renown unit for Slanesh. Lastly, lastly, yeah, lastly, we get the Knights of Immolation, Doom Knights of Zinch, wielding lances imbued with the Zinchian fire. The Knights of Immolation ride into battle on particularly spiteful discs of Zinch, spewing fire on their enemies below. You know, they might not look like your traditional mounts, but don't let that fool you. These elite cavalry are nonetheless deadly. So they get Searing Torrent, bombards enemies directly below with fire damage, also confers the Warp Flame contact effect. Carriers most uh, carries more uses than normal, but the ability only recharges once a unit is in melee combat limited use. So it looks like they basically get an ability that's similar to how the Flamers of Zinch attack. And that's kind of what it sounds like from the way that this kind of uh, is described. So, um... That could be pretty spicy, because the, the Flamers of Zinch are extremely strong, as long as they don't just get snipped to ribbons because they're very uh, glass cannony. Damage modifier, magic, and flaming attacks as well here onto them. And I believe they, they have anti-large and AP because of their lances. I I have not looked at the Doom Knights in forever. I think that I looked at the Doom Knights when they first 
when we first got access to them. I, I've never really used them in any of my campaigns for Zinch. I just use I just use the demons. They're so much better, right? And they're so much more reliable to to keep up to date because of the uh, replenishment issues for Zinch. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I think that they've got either AP or anti-large um, as an innate profile for them, but I could be totally off on that. So land battles join rank ranked. You now have a 50-50 chance of getting either or any of these maps. Death Pass, Arnheim, Battle for Itza, Broken Lake Gully, The Silver Spire, Blasted Lands, Darklands Crater, The Flats of Kislev, Floating Farms, and The Wastes of Slanesh. Now let's go into the game itself. So stability and performance has gotten some improvements here. Thanks to the amazing work of one of our community modders, Spartan 6. Listen we'll for Spartan 6 and their UI performance patch mod. A starting issue was brought to our attention when hovering over components of the UI, particularly when you have multiple mods installed. The root issue was caused when the game searches for the UI modifications are supposed to overwrite the base look of the UI. So this has now been fixed is what it looks like here. Improved UI assets are loaded over extended sessions in an effort to reduce stuttering and frame drops. Disabled the cursor and benchmarks to prevent results from being skewed. Fix an issue where certain characters, uh, certain character resources were being loaded during campaign and fix a rare crash by the AI when defending in battles. Some graphic fixes, some UI fixes this here as well. Several changes have been made to the character details panel, um, but mainly let's jump into gameplay because this is going to be huge, of course. Now, below are changes made to the gameplay rules, AI, and other mechanics that dictate how the game is played. To prevent instances where range units hold their fire because their friendly units in their line of fire, overlapping units are now considered by the game by the game as part of the same unit. This should ensure the range units can more consistently carry out firing orders. Now this is nice because you look at Zinch and you have what, like an entire faction dedicated to firing. You look at Kislev, the entire, almost the entire faction is a hybrid firing unit. You look at Cathay, which has a ton of uh, range units, especially close range units when you look at their, um, not cannoneers, but the, like the little shotgun blast, um, um, units that I can't think of the name of, of course. I, I can't think of the name of anything today, clearly. So this is going to be hugely beneficial to three of the seven factions just right out the gate. And it's going to, I think, really help out. So let's look at some other ones here. The Zinch, Nurgle, and Sinesh technologies, which previously provided lore passive abilities to greater demon units, now instead provide additional uses of the bound spells granted by other technologies. So that's kind of a different switch here. Um, I kind of like the increased use versus the lore passive ability uh, increase. Armies fleeing from Bastion Gates are now prevented from making attacks of opportunity. This allow this also prevents a progressive a progression blocking bug that could occur during battles. Autonomous riders and other entities are now properly reset after resurrection. This allows burning chariots to continue shooting where they were previously prevented from doing so. Fix the bug where matched combat was not in triggering for infantry units. Where they were kind of just weirdly slashed through each other. Uh, this should now actually work where they actually will match up and fight in, uh, in accordance with their animation. When ordered to attack groups of units which included range units will now move to a valid position where the range units can fire on the enemy rather than to a position in the same zone but too far away from the target which is nice. The attrition from plagues could become very frustrating to deal with in the game, so we've made some adjustments to make it less burdening. So Nurgle reduced the base duration of the Ague Plague, uh, Ague Plague from 3 to 2, replaced the attrition effect of the Flux with an increase in the casualties from attrition, which I think I kind of like a little bit more. Uh, Demon Prince removed the attrition effect from Bowel Steep and increased the Nurgle Corruption it provides and replaced the attrition effect from Red Ague with an increased with the increase in casualties from attrition. Again, I kind of like that a little bit more. We noticed that the Zinch AI faction use of changing away ways could have been irritating, so increase the cooldown applied to AI faction using ability by 70%, and minor factions can no longer use it, which is lovely. For the AI, improved how the AI scouts for us to generate more informed and decisive AI actions, and improve the AI utilizes summoned units in battle, and fix several issues which allow the AI to use abilities when it shouldn't. Um, AI control units now will no longer try to push through frontline units just to attack a backline, which was kind of frustrating. For spells, direct damage spells now deal damage, non-physical damage, meaning that physical resistance will no longer serve as a layer of defense as it did previously, which is very great to see. Exploit fi fixes, mana reserve effects such as the those provided by the Jade Amulet are now correctly applied, preventing an issue which could result in infinite magic reserves. So lovely to see that. Now for faction imbalances, we have a lot of stuff going on. And let's just kind of go through the big thing here with the trait changes to defeating legendary lords. So upon defeating the demon prince, the attrition effect now applies to 
all forms of attrition, which is lovely. Katarines now enables frostbite attacks for the victorious lord. Kostielteen enables flaming attacks. Both of those are really nice. Kugoth further reduces the ability of a plague to spread from 20 to now 80% and increases growth from 10 to 30. That is huge. For Scarbrand, charge and weapon strength trait bonuses now also apply to the lord's whole fucking army. I, I'm, I'm loving these. Grease's Gold Tooth increases the income from all buildings by 20%. Scrag the Slaughterer replaces the Winds of Magic increases when changing trait with Winds of Magic powers or capacity increased by 8. Way, way, way better. Nikaris added speed 6% for the Lord's Army. And Kairos got added Winds of Magic powers or capacity plus 5 and removed when fighting in Zinch factions. That's, that's the best part. Because Kairos's was annoying because it only would apply to Zinch. Now it's just a flat 5 bonus. But here's my thing these are these are really good <laughs> these are really goddamn good so i'm wondering if for immortal empires we'll also get a tooling of some of the defeated legendary lord traits because some of the some of the og warhammer 1 and warhammer 2 lords kind of have some crap traits so i wonder if we'll be getting a pass on some of those more weaker ones like dude the kugoths is amazing the plague reduction the kuga the the kugoth growth the kuga yeah the kugoth growth of 30 that's that's pretty that's pretty girthy greece's gold tooth increase income from all building by 20 percent. people are just gonna go hunt him down that's pretty nice to see demons of chaos with the plague troopers replace the charge bonus from uh effect with up to melee defense plus six for the nurglings plague bearers uh pretty much all the uh um uh, infantry units for Nurgle. So, replace the charge bonus effect with defense instead. So, that's much nicer. For Grand Cathay, so in update 1.3, we wanted to provide a solution for Grand Cathay where it comes to their ability to hold the line on in infantry combat. As a range focused faction, this is a critical element of their gameplay, which is why we're making Harmony more potent for melee units, but adding melee attack stats to Yang and adding a less impactful benefit of speed to Yin, as we're generally content with the current performance of range units. Other than this, we are partially rolling back the projectile penetration strength of crane gunners as we as we went somewhat overboard on 1.2. We're also aware of Cathay's struggle in the competitive battle space, so we're introducing cost changes to further stabilize. Um, I'm not going to go through cost changes as much here right now, but let's talk about some of the uh, stats. So the crane gunners got their... Um, basically their bullet penetration went from 0 to 2, now it's 1. So it's been scaled back quite a bit, but I think it's still pretty decent here. The Fire Rain Rocket has had its range increased from 360 to 400. The Sky Lantern has had its hit points increased by 1,000 hit points. And uh, there's a lot of uh, cost reduction across the board for the Crane Gunner, Fire Rain Rocket, Sky Lantern, and Zhao Ming, who got a 200 point reduction. For abilities, we fixed an issue which prevented Miao Ming from using her Eye of the Storm ability, which, again, this is the melee attack, weapon strength, and AP bonus damage one. Uh, formation attack soldiers who have the active ability will now move active, will now more actively seek out combat, making it far more effective in, in frontal engagements. They did say it was going to give a bonus to attack or defense in the previous blog post, so I wonder if that's just not said in this patch notes, but interesting. So Yang Harmony now provides melee attack uh, from 4 to up to 8, and Yin Harmony now provides speed from 6% up to 12%. Um, Lord Magistrate has also had some ability changes as well. Inspired Defense, Marksmanship, and Assault are no longer mutually exclusive. All three abilities can now be selected at the same time. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Added two new mutually exclusive abilities, though. Excellent Administrator to give him control, income from all buildings by 15%, or Astute General, unit experience gain plus 100 or recruit rank plus 1. So that's pretty nice. You can choose him to be kind of a governor, or you want him to be more of a general. I, I like that kind of role that you can place here for the Lord Magistrate. I, I like that a lot. For skills, um, do we want to go through all these skills? I think so, right? Yeah. So Blades of the Bastion replace the charge bonus effect with melee defense plus 5 for um, pretty much... Oh, these are... Um, yeah, we'll go with this. Uh, this is pretty much the rank 7 and above for your Long Spearmen, your Dragon Guard, your Jade Warriors, and Jade Warriors with Halberds. Increases their melee defense by 5 now. Um, pretty much all of the rank 7 and above things have gotten bonuses of spell resistance, missile strength for the respective sets of unit. Caravan Master fixed the ordering of skills in the first line that resulted in the immortality skill being hidden. Oh, <laughs> didn't even know that. Looming Lanterns added range 15% for Sky Lantern and Sky Junk, which is quite, quite nice. And Unified Charge added 5 melee attack for pretty much all of your cav at rank 7 and higher. 
So all the rank 7 and above spell or uh, skills got a buff. The following changes have been made to the Miao Ying skills. Harmonious increased the diplomatic relations with Cathay from 20 to now 40, and Persistent Fire no longer applies its effects twice. Zhao Ming's abilities, Desert Armor, now applies 10 armor to melee units in Zhao Ming's army in addition to Zhao Ming himself. That's kind of nice. Lord of Shang Yang added diplomatic relations with Cathay plus 20. So both of them now have an easier time confederating, which I think is pretty good. You had a big, you had a lot of difficulty trying to confederate each other as Miao Ying and Zhao Ming. So it's nice to see that this has kind of been at least helped out with the skills. Technology of the Cathayan Technologies Dragon Fleet Aegis and Sea Dragons Edict now apply to the faction's capital rather than Han Yu port specifically. Harmonic Balance Yang reduced the income effect from 40% to 15%, so quite a bit of a nerf there. Um, wait, reduce the income effect. Yes, I think so. Yes. I have to look at it in game. Because I didn't think I don't think that's the penalty one. Because there's one that gives you a penalty and it's when you're when you're fucking all over the place. But items, shield of the non, uh of the Nan Gao no longer requires the grounded state and then alchemist elixir of Paris of I'm not even gonna probably Pusin's I think it's Pusin's, I don't fucking know. Increases the number of uses from one to two. Same thing with the elixir of iron skin from one to two. What a day it's been for me so far. Um corn has gotten some some changes here, but again, they've already said they're pretty happy with corn. Uh, Gate of corn and Greater Gate of corn have had their um, cooldowns added onto them when the when the match starts. Now it starts with a 60 second cooldown that will only count down when in melee combat, or 120 for the Greater Gate. The skill corn chosen replaces the leadership effect with plus five melee attack for all of your uh, infantry units in corn. Kislev here is um, also getting itself a fair share of balance changes. Boris Ursus now deals frostbite attacks, which is quite nice. The armored Kossars have an increase to their charge bonus by four, and their melee defense has been increased by two. Uh, Daza's Hearth Blades, these are the great weapon um, regiment renown, have increased fire resistance from 20 to 40% now. Elemental Bearers are now granted the Chilling Aura passive ability and got a 100 point cost reduction. The Ice Guard are granted 15% spell resistance innately now. They increased their armor from 40 to 50, and they also got a slight 50 point gold reduction. And Winged Lancers increased the charge bonus from 60 up to now 70, which is quite nice. Um, doesn't mention the format of skills. Oh, okay. So their skills now only. So skills uh, in the first group now only offer a, one effect at level one because typically you get at level one, it's like, let's just say melee attack, whatever. Then level two gives you melee attack and melee defense. Melee, then rank three will sometimes increase those two or give you a third one as well. So now they've just made it all those skills just give you one uh, bonus in the first round. Technology Breach Loaders no longer applies its benefits to the basic and spear versions of Kossars, only armored Kossars and Streltsy, which I guess you could say makes sense because they're not using any kind of gunpowder stuff um, when they would load a breach. Dazes or Dodges uh, Brazier, uh, Dodges Brazers, multiplayer costs are increased from 100 to 150. So Nurgle has been better since 1.2, they were saying, but there's still some things that are going to be adjusting here, mainly with cost reduction and increasing. So Festering Stooges has gone an increase in cost by 100 points, and the Plague Drones have had a 100 point cost reduction. The skills here for the rank 7 and above have had some melee attack, melee defense, and speed, as well as missile resistance added to them for the respective ones that they would give bonuses to. Uh, these are again for the rank 7 and above second set of red line abilities. Gate of Nurgle and Greater Gate of Nurgle, same thing that you get with corn only it's a 30 second and a 60 second cooldown respectively for each one and locus of virulence now grants 100 percent ammo to soul grinders of corn which is quite lovely ogre kingdoms are in a great spot apparently um all three missions now offer a bonus reward meat growth from cancer or a rare magic item roughly double the amount of gold granted by treasury rewards and increase the minimum reward from 500 to 1500 the exact amount is determined by the issuing factions treasury this is for the uh, contract by the way sorry forgot to Mention that part. For battles, modified the splash attacks of Iron Guts and Man Eaters to hit smaller entities more consistently, and the Stonehorn reduced their missile resistance from 35 to 20%. So Stonehorns are going to be taking more damage from ranged attacks. Be mindful of that. The combat skills for Greases and Tyrants now only have two levels as opposed to three, as is the case with other lords. Their first level is equivalent to the second level of other characters now. Skills in the first group now only offer one effect at level one, just like we had with Kislev. 
and then a lot of bonuses to all the rank 7 and above abilities in the red line for the Ogre Kingdoms. Now for Slanesh, we're boosting the stats of Demonettes, the Exalted Demonettes, as well as the Soul Scent Passive. This should ensure that the Infantry Heavy playstyle are significantly more relevant going forward. Because right now, it's just like, it's just put them on uh, Seekers and put them on Chariots and have a ball. So it fixed an issue which prevented Slanesh's Wanton Destruction ability from properly increasing the income generated by raising settlements, and fixed an issue which prevented Slaneshi factions from forming packs with Beastmen factions via diplomacy. But as far as the units go, um, all Demonettes are getting an increase of 3 hit points per model, base damage has gone from 8 to 12, and charge bonus from 20 to 30. Those are significant increases. With the Exalted Demonettes, they are getting a 7... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Charge bonus is going from 28 to 35, base damage from 10 to 15, and AP damage from 28 to 35. Again, those are very significant increases to the damage profile for both Demonettes and for the Exalted, with a little more stability onto your standard edition's Demonette as well. Soul Tint increased the bonus armor piercing damage cap from 25% to a whopping 50%, just doubling outright. Gate and Greater Gate of Slanesh have the same thing as Corn and Nurgle, but 15 and 30 second respectively. All Lords now have a campaign skill that increases their replenishment rates of their troops, which is huge for Slanesh. Okay, very nice. For Zinch... Bring, okay, so in one uh, dev note here for Zinch, in update 1.2, we mentioned that we were considering bringing the Blue Horrors in line with other inexpensive infantry units by reducing their available ammunition. This is a massive change to their e efficacy, so to maintain their relevance in the campaign, we're tweaking the, accur the Accursed Horrors skill effect to ensure they get a notable boost to their missile strength. This won't quite make up for losing the ammunition, but we are already working on a new mechanic to aid in the ammunition carrying capacity of the Zinch Roger that will reveal in update 2.0. Stay tuned for more about this soon. Okay, so Blue Whores uh, have reduced their ammunition from 5 to 4. I said what I said. Abilities for the uh, Gate and Greater Gate of Zinch match that with um, the cooldown with Corn of 60 and 120 second, respectively, but. That cooldown will only count down when the Winds of Magic Reserve exceeds 15, so very interesting to see on that one. For the skills, all Lords now have a campaign skill which helps with the replenishment rate. Like I was saying, Zinch suffered really bad with uh, replenishment rate, so it's nice to see that. Accursed Horrors increase the Missile Strength benefit from 4, 6, 8 to 8. 12, 16 for each skill level. That's massive. So you are getting, you're now getting uh, rank 1 of that, uh, of that skill now grants you the previous rank 3's damage bonus. So that's a very great ability there. Technology Exalted Locus of Conjuration now grants 25% weapon strength for horrors rather than the 6 AP damage, which I think is a much better uh, choice. And then Wind uh, Wand of Whimsy multiplayer cost increased from 100 to 150. Now for the campaign, general updates here. Uh, some fix an issue where the non-chaos factions would not start new campaigns that won't get that or whatever. Uh, the Realm of Chaos here. So lots of changes here with Zinch's Realm and with the Kurgan Warband, but one of the biggest things here is that for the Forge of Souls battle, um, once the AI has collected four souls and teleports to the Forge of Souls, an AI, um, the player can now teleport and confront them. So you don't ever have to really take part in the battle. You can just kind of fight the Forge of Souls whenever the AI gets there and reset them. And once you reset them, they've got to go get their souls again. So... Um, this is a nice way to kind of, I guess, combat the Realm of, Soul, Realm of Chaos without actually taking part in it. The Kurgan Warband itself has also had a reduced rate at which the threat meter fills. When the threat meter is not full, Kurgan Warband armies will only spawn at each Bastion Gate when it is raised. The threat meter now reduces when any faction attacks and defeats a Kurgan Warband, rather than just the Cathayan player. Now reduces, threat meter now reduces, I think I said increases. Uh, improved visibility into when and why the threat meter is increasing or decreasing at any given time, which is huge. I mean, before it's like, yeah, it's going up, but the band's still there, but I can destroy the band, but why is it still going up? So it's nice to see we're getting more transparency with that. Several issues have been fixed with the Zinch's Realm. You can now see the sigil. Our sigils are now revealed upon entering and exiting a teleport locus. Action points are no longer removed. Uh, whenever you use or interact with any point of interest in the realm, and AI factions must now teleport eight times before they can access the final area. I think it was four before, or five, so it's been a nice increase on that. Finally, several adjustments have been made to the final encounter with Bellacor to make it less time-consuming and punishing. So all that here reduced the number of soul grinders during the final wave. Killing Bellacor will now cause the remaining demons to crumble and conclude the battle as well. Fix some other issues as well. Also reduce the rate at which units enter from the base of the map. 
Quest Battle Frozen Falls fixed several issues which would result in the battle being lost despite slaying all the mages. That is the one for uh, Boris Ursus, I believe. Some general updates to the... Um, to battles, ambush battles, AI, AI armies will no longer disregard enemy units and melee when retreating from an ambush battle, and domination battles. We've heard your feedback on the domination mode comeback mechanic. Before removing the mechanic completely, we wanted to experiment with a few iterations of the economy in the, li in the live setting to help us better understand how the game plays and evolves with different economic setups. Ultimately, we concluded and agree that rewarding the losing side based on victory tickets isn't the right way to go about offsetting snowball effects. For now, we will monitor what happens with the game mode in its most natural form. Please keep the feedback coming. As we said before, getting this mode right will be an, in an iterative process. Additionally, we've added further reinforcement points in the battle for Itza map, which will give the defending player more options or some options to regain their starting area in the event that they're rushed down the middle. Remove the combat mechanic and Battle of Itza has two additional uh, places and major settlement battles here. Updated the reinforcement lines in the Black Fortress Greenskins settlement map to prevent attackers from spawning within the settlement. So for multiplayer, fix a bug that could pre prevent the multiplayer game from refreshing. So... Looking forward, so that's all the stuff that's changed, right? Now, with 1.3, we now have 2.0 coming with the uh, Mortal Empire. So here's some of the stuff that's coming. The HUD color options. So the heads-up display can now be colored differently. As mentioned in a recent Rally Point interview with Rich Aldridge, the team is working to implement a variety of color options for you to customize your in-game HUD. The aim is to replace the, this alongside 2.0, at which point you'll be able to pick whatever color suits your fancy when conquering the world. This is nice, makes it just kind of offset the doldrum of just nothing but red. So you can have this nice uh, uh, Miao Yin color scheme, if you so wish, here today. So nice to see that that's going to uh, be applied. I wonder, though, if it'll just be, like, faction-related, right? Like, okay, all Cathay is this color unless you want to set it otherwise. Or all Nurgle is green unless you want to set it otherwise. Or all Ulthwan is... I don't know, light blue, white, whatever, unless you want to set it otherwise. So I wonder if it's going to have like a default for lords or factions. Settlement battle fatigue. One point of feedback we're looking to address is the overwhelming number of settlement battles encountered throughout the map. While we hope the game plan battle fixes above improve the current playability of settlement battles, we will continue to work on the long-term adjustments. And Cathayan formation attack. Oh, okay. So this is what we were talking about earlier. Originally announced in the 1.3 preview, an important change that we're intent we'd intended to make in 1.3 involved granting units 9 melee defense upon activating the ability. Unfortunately, this particular tweak didn't make it into this release, so we'll be ensuring it is added in update 2.0. So that is the nitty and the gritty of patch 1.3. So go ahead and let me know in the comment section below how you're feeling about this patch. I think this is a really strong step forward in the game, of course. Uh, Immortal Empires is going to be that ultimate, like, kind of, like, tipping point forward when we start to roll out DLC for Warhammer 3 as well. We start to really get into what made Warhammer 2 so fun was just kind of paying that map um, with all of the many legendary lords across the entirety of the Warhammer world, right? We've seen the map now. We know what we're going to be getting with the Immortal Empires, and we're already starting to get a taste of what's going to be coming with those, um, what are those called? With those starting locations, right? We just got an update on the starting locations for the Lizardmen. They released that on Twitter. I haven't covered that yet. I'm going to be doing my kind of speculation video, and basically I'm going to take whatever they've released, it, released the, the, the amount of days that I've missed, I'll put that in the speculation video saying, hey, here's what we know is fact. And then we'll start speculating on the rest of them as far as fun starting locations for Immortal Empires and Total War Warhammer 3. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. This was a huge, dense set of patch notes. Hopefully you uh, have some fun playing 1.3. Again, all of your mods are probably going to be broken for a little bit until those uh, mods get updated to 1.3, but hopefully that'll be a quick process for you. But as always, again, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.